I'm sitting here in like my $10 Uniqlo Disney t-shirt wondering, where did I go so wrong in my life? <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Fohad and welcome to the YouTube show about my life. But nothing really happens. I hope you all had a lovely holiday break because uh, it's over now. Back to reality. I wish you well in hell. <laughs> so today was actually my first day back at work after a month long Christmas New Year's break. And I'm feeling some feelings. It's so weird because whenever I'm actually like working my job, whether I'm in the office or at home, I really like my job. Like I really enjoy it. I get to meet a lot of people. I have a lot of fun. I get to socialize, do a lot of different things, be challenged, learn lots of things. Like it's all great stuff. I have very little to complain about when it comes to my job, if I'm being honest. But because of who I am as a person, I will find something to complain about and I will complain about it. There's nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. But I swear, like anytime I'm on holiday, particularly when I'm traveling on a holiday, I always just think to myself, how do I quit my job and become a beach crab? Like that's my goal. Like that's my ultimate goal in life. Just becoming an actual crab that lives on a beach and has zero worries in the world other than being eaten by a seagull or something, I guess. And, you know, there's definitely something to be said about, like, hustle culture and learning to live slower and appreciate the days you have, even when you are working, and not focusing so much on, like, breaks and holidays to fulfill you. You know, you can be fulfilled throughout the year, even when you are working. Surprise, surprise. I didn't actually know that until now. Oh. And that's definitely something I'm working on, you know? Like, appreciating my days, appreciating the time between work and you know, the time before the weekend starts. But there's something so inherently enticing about just quitting your job and doing nothing. It's getting tired now, though, to me. I, in the beginning, I was like, okay, it's cool, ha <laughs> ha Honestly, sometimes I wish I was one of those people that just has, like, zero ambition and zero desire to work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have I mean, what can I say? Kimmy K knows me well. She read me to a T. That's you have so to, true. You have to. Anyway, I did just wrap up my first day of work. I was really worried about coming back to work today because... You know, as I mentioned, it was a month long break, which is the longest break I've had for like three years, I think. Probably more than that, actually. Definitely at least three years. And I'm not sure why, but leading up to coming back to work today, I had all these worries in myself around like forgetting how to do my job or forgetting how to be professional because I'm just so used to like clowning it with you guys on YouTube and with my friends. But I guess it's like riding a bike, right? Like as soon as I logged in for work today, I was like immediately back into it. And maybe it's because I did take a long break that I feel like I'm re-energized and I feel like I'm more excited to be back at work after taking some time off. Whereas up until Christmas last year, I was still just like, oh my God, this is so difficult. How do I get back into work? How do I, I'm so tired. I'm so burnt out. I'm so this, rah, rah, rah. Like who knew, who knew? taking a break from work will actually help you be better at your job. Like who knew? Who fucking knew? I'll tell you who knew. The lawmakers in Australia who made annual leave a requirement for full-time and part-time work. Like, shout out to the unions. That's you have to, so true. You have to. Although I do wonder what it's like for the women who like return to work after a year of maternity leave, you know, after having a child because like that's a long break. If you have been on maternity leave before, I'm really keen to know what was the return process for you, right? Like how did you get back into it? Was it difficult? Did it take you a while to feel like you're back into the groove or were you like riding a bicycle straight back into it? So I did work from home today, which was nice. It was a really good way to just like ease back into being at work again. So right now I usually work uh, two days from home and two days in the office. But I do feel really bad for those people who have just been working from home this whole time and are only now suddenly being told to go back into the office more. Like I know so many people who are just so used to working from home and who have absolutely no desire to go back into the office. Well, honey, you get a big storm coming. And it's kind of hard to change people's minds around coming back into the office because we all know it works. We all know that we can work from home if we need to. We've just done it for like two years. And once again, I have nothing to complain about because I live in walking distance to my office. <laughs> but despite being so close to the office, I still really find value in working from home and not in like the, you know, it's fun to work in your pajamas and not leave your 
room or whatever it is. I'm talking more about like the actual productivity of working from home. Because when you're at home, you really just have all the time in the world to like focus on your tasks and focus on getting it done, which is really helpful for me because I get distracted by anything and everything all the time. Like I'm sure you, you could probably tell in my videos, like I get distracted by the plants in my room. I get distracted by things falling over. I get distracted by like the color of the roof that looks different in this lighting. Like it's all, like I'm easily distracted. So forcing myself to like sit in front of my work computer and like do what I need to do so that I can like log off and be like, I'm done. Greatest feeling in the world. Anyway, that's all I'm going to discuss for today. I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow after my first full day in the office to see whether I'm still this excited about being back at work. I'll probably go to the office tomorrow and come home like, man, gotta quit my job and become a beach crab. Alrighty. Hello, friends. Yes, it's me again. I'm still making this video. It's still going. It's still going. I just got home from being in the office all day today. You know, I thought I'd be really busy and that I would be really social and that I would be like catching up with people about their Christmas breaks. But it was so dead today that I literally spoke to three people for the entire day that I was in the office. I think it says a lot about you know, the millennial and Gen Z workforce who are like kind of hesitant to go back in because they've just become so comfortable working from home, doing their jobs really well. And, you know, we're all super burnt out. We're all really tired. Like the extra travel just makes things so much harder. So I totally get why people would prefer to just work from home. Everyone's got their preference. I'm really happy doing a hybrid model. So I go in two days a week. I work from home two days a week. And that works for me because even though I prefer to work from a home. I think working from home all week just makes me go a little bit crazy. Uh, going crazy. <laughs> and you know, there is really a lack of incentive to get people to come back into the office when they've been working from home for so long. Like it just doesn't make much sense to start coming back if everything works from home, you know? You know, it's always like companies haven't learned the lessons of the pandemic. Do they still think they have the same hold over employees that they used to have pre-pandemic? We talk a lot about hustle culture and productivity on things like YouTube and on social media, but those conversations don't really get fed into the actual corporate world as much. Who is having that conversation? I think it's almost like, corporations aren't really paying attention to what their workers are feeling or what they're really saying. They're burnt out and really struggling and like thinking about getting a new job like we talked about in my last video. You know, the labor market right now really heavily favors employees. So employers really need to do better in, you know, attracting and retaining staff. Otherwise, they're going to lose all their good staff members to the companies that are willing to have flexible work arrangements or are willing to work in a more hybrid fashion. Anyway, I should probably wrap up pretty soon because I'm trying to force myself to go to the gym today. There is a class at seven o'clock tonight. So I have about... 10 minutes to wrap this up, get dressed and run to the gym, which I can do. It's more that I just don't want to go to the gym. Because once you start going to the gym, you have to like keep going and keep going and keep on going. It's not like a one and done thing, unfortunately. So, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, now we got to go. <laughs> Oh, look at this scenery change. I just wanted to kind of reflect a little bit on what I was talking about in this video in terms of the work from home and work in person in the office debate. Obviously, it's a really hot topic at the moment, particularly across the corporate world and any other job that really requires you to go in some sort of an office. We've all been doing really well the last few years in terms of just being able to manage our work from home and being able to like successfully do our jobs from home. So when this debate comes out and there's this sort of like mandatory sentiment towards, you know, you must come into the office X amount of days a week. I think it does kind of let employees down a little bit because, you know, if you are doing your job really well at home, like why force someone to go into the office if it's not something that they want to do, if it's not something that they're comfortable with? You know, I think a lot of people act like Miss Rona is a thing of the past and that it's not really a concern when it comes to like physical spaces and going to events and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, going into the office is like a real risk when it comes to catching COVID again. So I can understand why people don't want to have to even potentially deal with that risk. Coronavirus! I'm telling you, shit is real! But, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's different. And we really need to respect everyone's decisions and preferences when it comes to this kind of 
in-person office debate. I think a good workplace will always allow their employees to really decide what it is they prefer to do, whether it's in-person or work from home or kind of a hybrid combination of both. I think it'll lead to better outcomes for the business as a whole because if you have happier employees you're going to have better results. But I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this and also what you're actually doing right now. So do you currently work from home? Do you work from the office? Do you do a combination of both? And I also want to know what you actually prefer. Like if you had your choice and your employer let you decide freely, what would you actually do? Like I, I really want to know what you guys think about this because it's really interesting to hear what people's takes are outside of the company that I work for because everyone at my company kind of feels the same way. And I think it's because our company has been very good at letting people decide what it is they want to do as opposed to like mandating you must do this or you must do that. There is a lot of freedom. So I think people are actually quite happy about it and kind of feeling good about being able to make that choice themselves. But obviously that's not the case for every company around the world. So I'm really keen to know how you're dealing with it, what your employer is making you do or not making you do. So do you prefer going into the office? Do you prefer working from home? Do you prefer a combination or both? Or are you like me, where you don't really care and you just want to retire early and live out your ambition as a beach crab? Totally valid, totally valid. Anyway, non-work-wise, how y'all doing? I gotta be honest, right now, my days are really revolving around knowing when the latest episode of The Real Housewives is dropping. You know, we're pretty lucky right now. We're being fed well by Bravo. We've got Potomac on Mondays. We've got Salt Lake City on Thursdays. And we've got Miami on Fridays. So, like... There's a lot of reality TV watching going on in my apartment, let me tell you. I think I've done such a good job promoting The Real Housewives to all my friends and colleagues and even you guys on YouTube. So I feel like at some point Bravo needs to reach out to me and like offer me some sort of like extensive and very lucrative sponsorship deal. What are you guys doing, Bravo? I'm the one spreading The Real Housewives message far and wide across the world. I always wonder if one day I'll stop watching The Real Housewives, but I just... I just don't think I will. Uh, aside from watching The Real Housewives, I have started to go back to the gym this week. You know, I mentioned in my last video that one of my goals this year is to start going back into the gym more regularly, but it's just so hard to motivate myself and like actually get myself out of my apartment or like reschedule parts of my day so that I can accommodate going to the gym. But I was thinking a lot about this and I was thinking about how I could keep myself motivated and accountable when it comes to going to the gym. You know, pre-COVID, I was going to the gym like, five times a week. But you know, it was a very different time. I wasn't working as much. I wasn't like spending all my time watching Real Housewives. But you know, at the end of the day, it was all about me scheduling myself in a better way. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking about how I can keep myself accountable when it comes to going to the gym. And I came up with a really clever idea, which I hope you guys will help me with. So obviously, I'm really trying to get back into weekly uploads on YouTube. And um, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I think I could do it. And I think I've planned far enough ahead that for like the next month or two, at the very least, I should be okay with uploading a video every week, which I'm very excited about. So I thought what I should do in each of my weekly videos, at some point in the video, I would put some sort of piece of evidence that I did go to the gym that week or did go to the gym a couple times that week or whatever my plan is, just so that I have someone, i.e. you guys, to be like, oh yeah, he went to the gym this week. You guys can keep me accountable and if you don't, I will be very upset. So just, you know, be kind of nice about it. We are having one of our very famous summer days here in Melbourne today where it's like 38 degrees and sunny. I don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit. It is so hot that I'm basically choosing not to leave my apartment for as long as I possibly can. Unless the weather starts to cool down tonight, I'm pretty sure today's going to be one of those days where I just kind of sit within these four walls. <laughs> you know, it sucks because like all of 2022, I feel like I was just like waiting for summer to arrive and start to like feel good about being able to move more and get out of the house more and like enjoy the summer days more and all the fun things you can do in summer. And then it gets to summer and A, it's like the coldest and rainiest or wettest winter we've had in decades. And then when we do have a nice sunny day, it turns out to be like 38 degrees Celsius. So like leaving the house will actually burn your body to a point that you will need to go to the hospital. Like, it's not safe out there, people. It's not safe. I have been getting burnt from the sun lately, which is quite rare for me because you can't really tell that I'm burnt because I've already got, like, kind of a darker complexion. But one of my friends the other day was like, oh, my God, you're looking really tan right now. It looks great. And I was like, girl, like, 
I'm always tan. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tough life we're all living. What can I say? Uh, I'm so sorry, friends, but I'm going to have to wrap this video up now. Firstly, I just want to say a big thank you for watching the video all the way through. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, make sure you give it a like. It really helps my channel out. As always, you can subscribe to the channel for more content from me. Don't forget to also turn your bell notifications on because what do you have to lose? Nothing. Uh, as always, if you do leave a comment, make sure you write where you're watching from because I like to know where in the world you are so I can stalk you a little bit in my mind. And I think that's everything I wanted to say today, besties. So until next time, bye.